In the previous video, we have seen an example where the logit model fails to predict the correct choice probabilities. In this video, we will propose a generalization of logit that addresses that issue. It is called the nested logit model. The main intuition behind the nested logit model can be summarized in this picture. In the previous video, we have considered the three alternatives being blue bus, red bus, and car, and somehow we have put the three of them at the same level. But we explain this apparent paradox by saying that red bus and blue bus are actually sharing a lot of unobserved attributes. So maybe one way to deal with it is to say, well, there are basically two levels. There is a decision to take the bus and the car. This is one level. And another level, which is, do we prefer the blue bus or the red bus, if we take the bus? I'm not implying any sequential choice here, not at all. I'm just providing some structure to the model in order to capture the fact that the two alternatives, blue bus and red bus, are actually correlated because they share unobserved attributes that are common to the fact that they are bus. How do we translate this intuition into equations? Well, the idea is to add an error component to the two bus alternatives. I will add here epsilon bus and here the same epsilon bus. The idea is that this epsilon bus, which is common to the two alternatives, is basically capturing all these attributes that are unobserved and common to the two alternatives. While the other error terms, epsilon red bus and epsilon blue bus, contain unobserved attributes that are specific to the red bus or the blue bus. So remember the intuition was to have a tree representation like this, where we had bus and the car, and at the lower level we had blue bus, red bus, and the car. This was the intuition. Now we will first look at what happens within the nest. So we will assume that the bus is chosen and we will try to model the choice between blue bus and red bus. So the idea is to calculate, let's say, the probability to choose the blue bus if the choice is between the blue bus and the red bus. If we look at random utility theory, this is the probability that the utility associated with the blue bus is greater or equal to the probability associated with the red bus. But this epsilon bus here, here and here, it's exactly the same on both sides. So it cancels out. And now we can assume that epsilon blue bus and epsilon red bus are i, i, d extreme value. They don't share unobserved attributes anymore because the unobserved attributes that we talked about before, they are all in the epsilon bus. And this has been removed. Therefore, we can write a logit model. So this probability is equal to e to the beta t divided by e to the beta t plus e to the beta t, which is one half. And this result makes sense. If we consider people who have already decided to take the bus, the model predicts that they will be indifferent to the color of the bus, meaning that taking a red bus or a blue bus is 50% chance. And next, what we have to do is to look at the upper level. How are people choosing between bus and car? I know the utility of car. It's the same as we used before. This is beta t plus epsilon car. But now I need to associate a utility with the alternative bus, which is an aggregate alternative. We will do as we always do in the context of random utility models. So we say that the utility of bus is composed of a deterministic part 
and a random term. The deterministic part should be some sort of combination of the utility of blue bus and the utility of red bus. But what about epsilon bus? What assumptions should we make about its distribution? So the idea is the following. We will define a logic model at the upper level to model the choice between bus, the aggregate alternative, and car. And we will invoke utility theory to say that the utility of bus is the expected maximum utility between red bus and blue bus. So for the point of view of the individual, if the red bus happens to be better than the blue bus, well, the utility of bus will be the utility of the red bus. And for individuals who happen to prefer the blue bus uh, versus the red bus, the utility of bus will be the utility of blue bus. So this idea to calculate the expected maximum utility is consistent with the random utility theory that we have been deriving from the beginning. Let's define this concept of expected maximum utility. So consider a set of alternatives, capital C, and we will say that the utility associated with the set is the largest utility within the set. If the utility is written, as we always do, as the sum of a deterministic part and an error term, we can write it like this. And basically what we would like to do is to write the utility of C as the sum of a deterministic utility and an error term as well. The exact formulation here will depend on the assumptions that we will make about the epsilon i's involved in the specification. And in the context of the nested logit model, we will see what happens when the epsilons are iid extreme value distributed. So if the epsilon i are iid distributed following an extreme value distribution with scale parameter mu b, then the deterministic part of the maximum utility, which is the expected maximum utility, is equal to 1 divided by mu b log sum over i in c e to the mu b vi. And the expected value of the error term is equal to gamma divided by mu b, where gamma is the Euler's constant. And this is not really important because these constants will be absorbed by the alternative specific constants. The important thing is this formulation here. Indeed, this formulation provides a specification for the aggregate alternative bus as a function of the utility associated with each of the alternatives belonging to the aggregate alternative. In the context of the nested logit model, we will call a group of alternatives a nest. So the expected maximum utility of a nest is defined by this log sum formula that depends on the utility of all alternatives within the nest. So let's go back to our blue bus, red bus example. And let's write the expected maximum utility for this nest bus. So we apply the log sum formula that you have seen in the previous slide. So we have 1 divided by mu b log e to the mu b v blue bus plus e to the mu b v red bus. And now we use the specification of V blue bus and V red bus that we have introduced, which is simply beta times time. So we have 1 divided by mu b log of e to the mu b beta t plus e to the mu b beta t. 
which is equal to 1 divided by mu b log of 2 e mu b beta t. I know the log and the exponential will cancel out, and what we will obtain is beta t plus 1 divided by mu b log of 2. And mu b again is the scalar parameter associated with the epsilons. Okay, so this is the epsilon that we have used for the logit model within the nest between blue bus and red bus. It means that the utility associated with bus will depend on this parameter, the mu b, the scale. And let's investigate how it works. So let's calculate the probability of car. Again, assuming that epsilon car and epsilon bus are i id extreme value distributed with the parameter mu. So we have a logit model and the probability of car would be e to the v car divided by e to the v car plus e to the v bus, which is equal to e to the mu beta t e to the mu beta t plus, and this is v bus, so e to the mu beta t plus mu divided by mu b log of 2. I've been using here the definition of v bus that we have derived in the previous slide. So if you put everything together, the probability to choose the car is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 2 to the mu divided by mu b. We know already that travel time does not matter in this example because travel time is the same for all the alternatives. So the choice is not driven by travel time. The choice is driven by whatever attributes are in the epsilon. And it's all about the assumptions we make about the distribution of these epsilons. And in this context, we have managed to characterize these correlations using two parameters, mu and mu b. And these parameters are respectively the scale parameters of the epsilons at the upper level and at the lower level. If I draw my diagram again, I have bus here, car, blue bus, and red bus. The choice between blue bus and red bus was done using a logit model, assuming that the error terms were i i the extreme value with parameter mu b. And at the upper level, there is a choice between bus and car, which is again a logit model with scale parameter mu. And what we see is that the probability to select an alternative, let's say the car here, depends on the ratio between the two scale parameters. In this picture, I have plotted the choice probability for the two alternatives, car and bus, as a function of this ratio between mu and mu b. Actually, the theory says that the ratio between mu and mu b must be between 0 and 1. So here I have plotted all the valid values of this mu divided by mu b. What we see is that if mu divided by mu b is 0 or close to 0, well, basically, the choice probability is 50%. It means that in this case, for the point of view of the decision maker, blue bus and red bus are exactly the same. They are fully correlated. There is complete correlation. There is no difference. Now, if you move to the right part of the axis, when mu divided by mu b is equal to 1, in this case, you have one-third probability for car and two-thirds probability for bus. But this is exactly the results that we obtain using the logit model. So basically, when mu divided by mu b equals 1, meaning when the scale parameter at the upper level is the same as the scale parameter at the lower level, 
then our model is actually a logit model. It's equivalent to assume that all these epsilons are independent. And in this case, we didn't like this idea. The nice thing with the, the model, the nested logit model as we have introduced it here, is that mu divided by mu b can take any value between 0 and 1. I just comment on the two extremes here, complete correlation or complete independence, but all intermediate values are valid as well. And this ratio will actually be estimated from data. If we look at it in terms of correlation, where well, it can be shown that the correlation between the error terms is equal to this quantity here, 1 minus mu square divided by mu b square. And you see here that if mu divided by mu b is close to 1, the correlation is basically 0. We are back to the logit model. And if mu divided by mu b is close to 0, the correlation is close to 1. It means the two alternatives are actually identical. The two error terms are exactly the same. Let's introduce the terminology. You have seen that the main idea is to group together a set of similar alternatives. In our example, it was the red and blue buses together. We will call these groups nests. And the idea is that we partition the choice sets, meaning that each alternative belongs to exactly one nest. The model that we have derived is called the nested logit model. And this ratio, as we just discussed, mu divided by mu b, that basically characterizes the correlation of the error terms within the nest, must be estimated from data. As I told you, this quantity should or must lie between 0 and 1. And in terms of interpretation, we can see that going down the tree as we plotted it, the mu's must increase. And the mu is a scale parameter of the distribution the distribution of the error terms. So the fact that the mu must increase means that the variance must decrease. Now let's write the equations for a general model. Okay, we have seen how to derive it using the red bus, blue bus example. But let's see now the equations for the general case. We have a choice set C that we partition into capital M nests that we denote by C1 to Cm. The probability to select one alternative i within the choice at c is decomposed as follows. So this is the sum over all nests of the probability to choose alternative i given nest m times the probability of the nest. But we have assumed that we have partitioned the choice set. Therefore, each alternative belongs to exactly one nest m meaning that only one term in this sum is non-zero. So we can write the nested logit model like this. The probability of i is equal to the probability of i given m times the probability of m, where m is the only nest that contains alternative i. And the last ingredient is the expected maximum utility. So each nest is associated with a scale parameter that we denote here by mu m for nest m. And the expected maximum utility is given by this log sum formula. So this is 1 divided by mu m times the logarithm of the sum over all alternatives within the nest of e to the mu m vi. This actually happens to be the denominator of the probability given by the logit model. In this context, we can now write separately the within nest and the across-nest probabilities, they are both given by a logit model. The within-nest probabilities include the scale parameter of the nest, and the across-nest probabilities are based on the expected maximum utility that we have defined previously. We have another scale parameter here at the upper level, which is usually normalized to 1. So you normalize the mu parameter to 1. Remember, mu divided by mu m must be between 0 and 1. It means that each of the mu m must be greater or equal to 1 to be consistent with random utility theory. In this video, we have introduced the nested logit model. 
The idea is to partition the choice set into nest, each alternative belonging to exactly one nest. And the idea is to put together in the same nest alternatives that are such that the error terms are suspected to be correlated. Each nest is associated with a scale parameter and with an expected maximum utility. There is also a scale parameter associated with the upper level, which is the choice across nest, but this scale parameter is normalized to one, and the scale parameters of each nest are estimated from data. To be consistent with utility theory, they must be greater or equal to one. 